Hi folks, I'm Kevin Smith, one of the pastors here at Hope Lutheran Church. Glad to be with you again. In fact, uh, right now, as you listen to this uh, devotional, I'm with a group of our folks from church who are traveling through Italy and then into Germany, South Germany, as we end up in the village of Omer Amagau to watch the Passion Play there. It's just south of Munich, this little village in the Bavarian Alps. It's a wonderful story, and I share with you just a bare outline of that situation, that story, and how it has impacted so many of us around the world over the years. The play's presentation it can be traced to the period in the 17th century when the plague devastated Europe. In 1633, the Black Death was sweeping across the continent. You think we have problems with our virus situation, but that was much worse. That plague was killing thousands. And for months, the small village of Omar Amagal managed to keep the dreaded disease away and at bay, mainly because of its remote location in the Bavarian Alps. People just couldn't get there. Eventually, the epidemic struck the nearby town of Etal. And the people of Omar Amagal, however, controlled they thought they controlled the spread of the disease by preventing strangers from entering their village, an early version of a lockdown, I think. And to late one evening, a villager who had been away became homesick for his family, and he stole back into the town and unknowingly brought the plague to his people. Within a few months, 84 villagers had died. Well, in July of 1633, the survivors gathered and they made a solemn oath to God. If he spared them from further deaths, every 10 years they would perform this play entitled back then, The Play of the Suffering and Death of Our Lord, which we know as the Passion Play. Now, according to the story passed down through the generations, God heard them. God heard them and there were no more deaths. In 1634, the townspeople performed the Passion Play for the very first time. Eventually, their vow was adopted by their children and their descendants. And to this day, the villagers of Omar Amagau have kept the promise virtually unbroken. It's a musical drama, and it follows the life of Jesus from the time he entered Jerusalem through the resurrection. And most of the Passion Play is sung opera style with a full orchestra chorus providing a rich musical backdrop. The modern play, it takes place in an open air stage with a colored auditorium that seats about 4,700 people with a total cast and crew of over 2,000. The play boasts of 130 speaking parts and then hundreds of, of, of smaller parts and there are additional members in the orchestra and chorus. At one point, in fact, there are some 600 people on the stage. And remember, this play is performed only by the people of Omar Amagau. In fact, you have to live in that village at least 20 years before you are allowed to be a participant of this passion play. And the town itself only has maybe about 5,000 people. And so 2,000 of those people are gonna be involved in the play. The production uses latest technology for shifting scenery and all of that, but the stage itself, there are no microphones. The acoustics are incredible. In fact, this stage, our own Justin Morgan would just love to get his hands on this and have some fun. He is our great worship designer and creating such powerful environments for our worship here at Hope. So he would love to be a part of this Omar Amagao experience, I'm sure. And another interesting comment is that everybody dresses in biblical costumes and whatnot. The men on Ash Wednesday, the year before the play starts, uh, I mean the, the months before it starts, the, on Ash Wednesday they, they stop shaving. So their beards are ready. The play starts in May and goes through to October. One performance a day. So again, virtually everyone's life is dominated by this play. And it is an incredible experience for us at Hope to be a part of this. Not only uh, in June we will be there, but again we'll have another group in September in, in uh, Omar Amagal to witness and enjoy this play. 
But it's a wonderful testimony to the power of God working and the story of his death and resurrection, the impact that it has. The Passion Play, this play is known all over the world. In fact, we sometimes, uh, you have experienced it in Spearfish, South Dakota. It's inspired, their version is inspired by the play in Omer Amagal. It is a wonderful story. And it is always good to remember that in the cross of Christ, I glory, I glory. I love these words Chuck Swindle writes, Return the cross to Golgotha, he entitled this poem. I simply argue that the church be raised again to its God-given place of significance. I am recovering the claim that Jesus did not begin a project that was to be criticized and assaulted, destined for weakness, irrelevance, and decay, but rather for strength, purity, and dignity. In a world that has lost its way, where cynics and thieves and gamblers have become its voices of authority, rather than confident Christians who walk humbly and prayerfully with God, their God. Because that is what the church was designed to be. And that is why Christ predicted invincibility. And that is where Christ's people ought to be and what the church ought to be about. In the cross of Christ, I glory. Thank you to the people of Omer Amagal, to the village, to the villagers who have continued to keep their promise, to keep that story of Christ, his cross and his resurrection in the forefront and reminding the whole world that in the cross of Christ, I glory. That is our strength and that is our hope. Thank you, thank you, that even out of the depths of the plague, can come such a beautiful testimony to God's amazing grace. We'll see you next time. God bless. And I'll see you next time back here in Fargo. And remember, God loves you. And there's not a darn thing you can do about it. Until next time, stay safe.